Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Nori with you, Samuel Chong, back with us, certified court interpreter and Chinese translator. He has interpreted a number of books from Prophecy, the Revelation of H.M. versus Stuck, and he has taken these messages in order to give people hope and help promote a better world through his scholarship. Samuel, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me again, George. My pleasure. What got you involved in these interpretations of these books? Well, I was uh, always fascinated by space and the paranormal when I was young. I thought if the ETs could contact us and uh, we can just learn from them to get as, many, as much information as possible about the uh, technologies and um, the mysteries of the paranormal so that we can just uh, um, solve all the mysteries. And so I stumbled upon this book, uh, Theobald Prophecy, and 334 lies, and uh, I thought it's a good idea to have them translated into Chinese and English so that more people can read them. So that got me into translating these two books um, into Chinese and also into uh, from German to English. How old are these books, Samuel? Well, the first book, uh, Theobald Prophecy, it was um, written in 1989 and got published in English in Australia in 1993. And uh, the second book, the second book, 334 Lies, it was originally published in German in 2001, and then I had it translated into uh, English uh, just last year. So relatively new books. Yes, yes, relatively new books, yes. And the authors of them, they are, they are where? Well, uh, Theobald Prophecy was written by Michel de Marquet. He was um, a French-Australian who passed away four years ago. Ah. And the second book, uh, the autobiography about the uh, highest chair of the uh, Illuminati, um, he actually disappeared uh, right after he finished writing this book. So no one knows where he is at right now. And this ET technology and knowledge, tell me where you got your information from, from these books or elsewhere? From this book, actually specifically from the book Theobald Prophecy, because it contains so much information that we can actually verify. Let's talk about some of the technology that they might possess. And do we have any of it now? Well, interestingly enough, um, they revealed some technologies that every one of us can incorporate and utilize for our own benefit. Um, but there are also other technologies that um, need uh, specific uh, kind of research and development in order to incorporate the technologies. But there is something that we can actually do to help us, like uh, to improve our health and also well-being. And uh, you're a staunch believer in both, aren't you? Yes, I do. I believe that uh, the, the information contained, contained in this book can really benefit us uh, spiritually and also materially. Well, with Samuel Chong, his websites are linked up at coasttocoastam.com. ET technology, what does that mean to you? To me, it means that uh, the technology is that we haven't been able to develop or commercialize or promote it to a wide um, spread audience. There are certain ET technologies that are withheld by certain group of people, for example, the military or special interest groups, that uh, people like us uh, haven't been able to really take advantage of them. Um, but uh, I think uh, certain technologies, uh, as written in this book, should be uh, promoted uh, on a wider scale. Now, the ET propulsion systems, what do you think it is? I mean, how are they able to travel such vast differences? They're doing something different that we obviously can't do. 
That's right. They're able to travel a long distance in such a short time uh, because, uh, according to this book, The Oba Prophecy, they first travel at a speed faster than the speed of light, a few times faster than the speed of light, into deep space. And then in deep space, they used what they call transubstantiation or teleportation to immediately transfer themselves or teleport themselves into another location in deep space. And then from that location, they travel again at a few times faster than the speed of light to reach their destination, their own planet. Are they constantly in touch with you, Samuel? Uh, no, because uh, I actually would like them to only help me when it's when it is absolutely necessary, because um, I really want to take full advantage of my lifetime to really grow and to respond to my life challenges, because that's the best way to learn. Uh, when you are given a meal uh, or when you are given the solutions to a puzzle or a problem, that's probably not the best way to learn or to remember. I really want to learn it on my own, on my own ways without their intervention. A couple areas on this planet that have been fascinating to all of us, the Great Pyramids of Giza and the Bermuda Triangle area. You've looked at both of these through the eyes of ETs, haven't you? That's right. I was very curious about uh, the Great Pyramid and the Bermuda Triangle, so this book provides uh, the answers. Um, and regarding the Great Pyramid, it really resonates to me that uh, it's actually a two, a two or energy center that captures cosmic energy and also terrestrial energies so that people who use the Great Pyramid correctly could actually communicate with ETs on other planets and also to explore parallel universe. And also, like according to this book, uh, the ancient Egyptians also used uh, the Great Pyramid correctly to make rains and to moderate weather. And I found that to be very interesting because uh, there are scientists, modern scientists, that um, also show that the Great Pyramid is an energy center that can actually do a lot of wonderful things. And they also like use the, what they call organ energy, organ energy to organ, make rain yeah. and to moderate weather. Uh, yeah, but modern scientists are using that now, so they picked that up from that kind of technology. Exactly. So that's very interesting. It really is. They ionize the clouds with it, don't they? That's right. Uh, that's actually done by scientists from the University of Reading in the U.K., and they did a lot of experiments and successfully. And what do you think the Bermuda Triangle is, Samuel? Well, according to the advanced uh, beautiful ETs from Theoba, the Bermuda Triangle is actually entry to a warp or a portal uh, to a parallel universe. So people, ships, or planes that are near that area got sucked into this portal. And I, I think it's really interesting because it can actually explain a lot of the cases, uh, the missing 411 cases by David Politis, yeah. in which uh, people, people just disappear. Just, yeah, they just mysteriously vanish in national parks. I mean, it's so strange that they disappear in clustered areas. And also the rescue dogs don't uh, pick up any scent. And also, like, people in a group, just like one person within this line of people just suddenly vanish. And you don't hear also, them scream or anything. They're, they're just gone. Right, right. And corpses actually are found, are found in inaccessible places. And also there are cases in which when the corpses are found, um, they found that they, they walked to their bones. So this actually matches the account of uh, Michel de Marquet, who actually went inside of the parallel universe and actually saw what went on inside of everything. Samuel, have you been aboard an ET craft? No, I have not, but I'd love to when I have the chance. Would you go if they asked you? Yes, I would definitely go, like Michelle did. What if they didn't bring you back? Well, I would be very happy because um, to uh, Michelle de Marquin, to me, the Category 9th planet is actually like just like a paradise. 
um, everything is so perfect and so loving and so compassionate. And the people there um, perform all the miracles that performed by, by Jesus Christ as documented in the Bible. So they could do everything that Jesus Christ did. Um, and I think uh, that would be a perfect place. I, I wouldn't want to come back, actually. You really wouldn't? I really want to go there, yes. But you, but you wouldn't matter if you stayed there? It doesn't really matter because... Uh, I'd miss my be, family, I think. Well, um, Michel de Marquet thought that he would miss his family, but he didn't. He forgot his family. No. And he did, he did. He forgot his family. Oh, my God. And actually, he didn't want to come back. Um, they actually didn't tell him that uh, he was coming back, and he felt really, really sad after he was told that he was coming back to Earth. So he has written this book, Theo Uba Prophecy. That's right. And this is based on his experiences with ETs? Exactly. And he documented everything that he saw, he witnessed, he heard, or he experienced. So it's a very detailed account of his personal experiences of traveling to this planet called Theoba or Jehovah for nine days and then came back. It's too bad we've lost him. Yes, four years ago. He also wrote about a time machine. Tell me about that. Well, um, according to the Theobans, um, the U.S. government was actually developing a time machine at that time, I think in the uh, late 80s or, or earlier than that. Uh, in the very beginning, through the uh, Philadelphia experiment, uh, when they found that uh, there could uh, be a distortion of time and space when they project a certain wavelength of frequencies into into the ships. So um, they say that uh, the U.S. government, the military, was actually a making, making a mistake. They were actually trying to adapt to the wavelengths, which is a mistake. They should have adapted to the vibrations of the Akashic Records, which rotates around Earth like at seven times the speed of light. So people with practice, they can actually go inside of the Akashic Records and look at what happened in the past, uh, in history. Um, so this is actually can be done by people who, who are highly spiritual and who have the power to do so. It is fascinating how that works, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, but going to the future is another concept. And it's another thing that, well, our actions decide what future is going to be like. So we can actually see certain probabilities that's going to happen in the future, but it's not a fixed um, projection. We really need to act in order to um, determine what the future is going to be like exactly. What's easier, going back into time or going into the future? Going back in time is much easier than much going easier. into the future. Huh. And you believe that the future depends a lot on consciousness and things like that? Exactly. And, and the uh, Theobans, they can only see about 100 years or so to the future. They cannot predict what's going to happen um, more than 100, 100 years ahead of us. That's still a long ways out anyway, isn't it? Yeah, so we really need to get it going and to mend our ways, because actually the book, The Yoga Prophecy, is not a book of prophecy. It's a book of warnings, just like the book of Enoch. When Enoch was told to write a book, and he did so, and he was taken away by Jehovah or God, and a few decades later, Noah was told to build an ark, and Noah was a great grandson of uh, Enoch. Michel de Marquet, the author of The Yoga Prophecy, was also told to write this book. And he said that uh, what uh, Enoch described in the book of Enoch is very similar to what he actually saw on the planet Theoba or Jehovah. And, and similarly, you can imagine what's going to happen a few decades later. And um, I think uh, this is a very kind of a parallel comparison between Enoch and Michel de Marquet. Tell us about this anti-gravity technology that you came upon. Well, um, according to this book, the uh, Theobans, 
they're really um, kind of adept at incorporating anti-gravitational technology. You see everything that they do. For example, when they fl- travel within an um, under planet, they use the like a traveling vehicle, which is like a small hand device that neutralizes the um, what they call cold magnetic forces of uh, their planet. And they say that if you raise your vibrations to a higher level, um, the vibrations can actually neutralize the gravity of the planet. So similarly, the same technology can be developed on Earth. And actually, I personally think that the uh, government uh, has already developed the anti-gravitational technologies. Are they using it now, do you think, Samuel? Yes, in some of the secret government programs, um, trying to reverse engineering the uh, technologies of the grave and also trying to get their own advantage um, from their competitors. You've seen the videos shot from the USS Nimitz uh, from the the jets, right? Yes, yes, I've seen that, yes. Tic Tac videos. Is it possible that those craft are ours? Yes. This is a very interesting question because uh, there are ways to distinguish the crafts that are really ours and also the crafts that are real ETs. Uh, one way to distinguish them is that the our crafts are actually mostly triangular in shape, and the ET crafts are more like uh, spherical shaped, and they kind of um, give the people a more kind of uh, comfortable and loving experience in which our craft, sometimes they try to imitate uh, or project like a scary experience to the people that they abduct. Um, I think the real ETs, they are spiritually developed you know, in a much more advanced level that they don't want to invade us at all or they don't want to cause harm to us um, because otherwise they and wouldn't they be could. allowed to travel to other planets. Uh, you see a similar comparison, like uh, we traveled to the moon about 50 years ago, but we never went back. The reason, according to Michel de Marquet, is that we were warned off from the moon. We were still fighting against ourselves, like among ourselves. So we are not ready. We were not ready, and we are still not ready to explore the universe to other planets because we're just going to pollute, pollute other planets. Uh, they don't want us to really cause any harm to the inhabitants of other planets. So they would do everything possible to prevent us from, for example, landing on the moon again. By, by warding us off the moon, why? Because, um, like, we have a lot of um, intentions that are not necessarily good for the harmonious, um, like like the universe or other inhabitants on other planets, if we keep fighting against ourselves, that means that we would fight um, other ETs on other planets. They wouldn't want us to happen. Um, and they, they would prevent us from going to the moon again or to explore other planets. I mean, even if Elon Musk wants to travel to Mars or maybe to um, go to another planet, I don't think that's going to happen because uh, the ETs are going to uh, warn us and, and to to prevent us from um, doing that so successfully. Successfully. Our guest tonight is Samuel Chong. As we are talking about the Theoba prophecy, the Golden Planet book, it's uh, an incredible story. Would you say that the author of the book, the uh, Michael Michel, was a prophet? I wouldn't say that because um, he was actually a landscaper, a farmer in Australia. Oh, really? Who, uh, did, yeah. He didn't have a lot of education. He didn't go to college. Just got visited, he, I guess, huh? Right. He got visited, and, and he didn't know how to type, and he didn't know how to use computer, not, not to say that he could surf the Internet. He didn't know how to do any of those. So it's not like he knew a lot about what he was going to be talking about. That's right. He was just um, kind of uh, faithfully reporting what he was told and what he saw and experienced. And I met him twice. He was um, like um, 
dictating to his uh, Vietnamese niece when he was writing emails to me. I mean, I witnessed how he communicated with other people all through his niece who typed everything for him. Fascinating. Samuel, explain once again to people just tuning in what the Theuba Prophecy book is all about. It's a book written by the author Michel de Marquet, who in 1987 was taken by this group of uh, beautiful, nine-foot-tall, highly advanced ETs and uh, to their planet for nine days and then came back. And he was told many of the mysteries and, and the paranormals on Earth um, and also the solutions to our current day problems. And the fascinating uh, book with a lot of uh, detailed and specific information that the readers can really verify. How did you come across the book? Well, I really wanted to unveil all the mysteries of the universe and the paranormal. So I wanted to find that out by receiving such information from ETs that uh, are highly advanced so that we can actually take the shortcut to not to waste a lot of time to do our own research. And I found this book on Amazon, and it has all the answers uh, to my questions. You stumbled across it like that? Yes, yes, accidentally. Well, that's amazing. And it captured your attention, didn't it? Yes, it really answers all my questions regarding for example, the stories in the Bible and also ET technologies and also what we do in life, the purpose of life, uh, either reincarnation and how we respond to the challenges that we all face in life. So it's uh, really like a comprehensive book that is uh, like answers everything. Let's talk a little bit about how they have recommended we take care of our physical health. What are some of the ways? Yes. They emphasize that um, there are indeed human energy fields of um, people, that some people can actually see the colors of auras. Uh, Some people call that uh, auras. And they kind of uh, can predict what's going to happen to us physically. So it actually shows the changes of colors before the physical symptoms manifest in our physical body. So the way to really see the auras is actually to um, use uh, the third eye. uh, Some people meditate and be able to develop this kind of ability, and some others uh, just uh, have this kind of natural gift, such as uh, Barbara Brennan, a former NASA Mm -hmm. scientist. Yes. Now these colors tell you what? The colors tell the person's uh, intentions, but also personality and also a lot of the health conditions. For example, like there's a person, my friend um, um, Roger, he can see the colors of, of auras. And when he sees like there's a grayish area, like around the liver area, so maybe three or four months later, the physical symptoms would appear that the liver would have some kind of problems. So that's kind of uh, like... Um, a way to predict what's going to happen. So you can actually um, make it uh, go away before physical symptoms happen by, like, healing the, uh, uh, to to make the colors go back to the normal colors. Now, do the colors do the healing, or do they just tell you what's good or bad about yourself? Both. Uh, When people see the colors of auras, they can tell whether it's good or bad about you. You can also at the same time incorporate the colors to moderate or maybe to improve the colors of your auras. So this is the importance of uh, color therapy, or some people call it uh, chromotherapy, that was very popular in the 1920s before antibiotics were developed by the pharmaceutical companies. So... um, uh, there are a lot of uh, studies and experiments done by scientists. For example, like uh, just uh, recently in, in 2016, Harvard Medical School had a research study on the color green uh, to the effects of uh, migraines. It found that uh, the color green or uh, green light actually reduces migraines on, on the people who participated in the, in the clinical experiment. It is so effective 
that the uh, people who participated in the experiment requested them to give them the LED green lights free of charge because uh, they really want to use the, the lights at home to reduce their migraines. So this is a color green. So there are other colors that have other um, effects on people. Um, I can elaborate on the color pink, which is uh, very interesting. Is that Sure. Uh, How does that work? Yeah. So in the 1980s, uh, San Bernardino County Probation Department did an experiment. They painted the walls uh, into pink color, and they found that the children tend to relax and stop yelling. And so uh, similarly, in uh, 1979, the U.S. Naval Correctional Facility in Seattle, Washington, also did a similar experiment. And they found out that the... um, in about 15 minutes after seeing the color pink, um, the inmates, they, they actually had a complete cessation of hostile erratic behavior. And, and also, there's a other interesting um, implication or application of uh, pink color by a football coach from the University of Iowa um, by the name of Hayden Fry. He painted um, the visiting team's locker room in color pink because he knew the color pink could reduce muscle strength by by maybe like 30% or so. So he didn't lose any like home game in many years of coaching at the University of Iowa. So this is a very interesting implication or application of the color pink by a football coach. What about blue? What does that do? So blue reduces um, suicide, um, as evidenced by an uh, experiment they did in London. They painted uh, the Blackfriars Bridge into color blue and found that the suicide rate reduces by, reduced by, a, by a, a multiple times. And, color, and blue light also has antibacterial, antiviral effects, as um, shown by a research study by Harvard Medical School. Interesting. And this is, yeah, this is also the color that they used to disinfect Michel de Marquet after he went into their spaceship. Now, what did they teach him about death and passing to the other side? They say that uh, there's uh, reincarnation, and they actually showed Michel de Marquet his past 80 lives. Um like life is actually a learning ex- uh, process in which we accumulate spiritual lessons in each lifetime um, by experimenting or experiencing um, pain, suffering, or happiness. We accumulate uh, this kind of lessons that we send to our higher self. And uh, when a person dies, the astral body of the person leaves a physical body, taking away all the spiritual lessons learned in the lifetime. It's a very interesting experience. It is a very interesting phenomenon is that, uh, well, after a person dies, uh, it goes through a life reveal process in which the person reveals how he or she did in his lifetime. Like he could feel uh, all the things he did himself or unto others. He would be able to feel how others felt when he or she acted in a certain way. So, um, and then the person would evaluate him or herself. Uh, how he or she did in the lifetime, and then decide whether to reincarnate and what kind of family families to be reincarnated to. So this is the purpose of life. So there's nothing to be afraid of death. And when our family members pass away, um, if they did well in their lifetime, fulfilling their life mission or purpose, then there's nothing to be worried about because their spirits or their souls are are always uh, with us, and they remain forever in the universe. Yeah, what do they say about the souls, Samuel? They say that the souls are really, um, in their words, like higher selves that uh, elevate or move up to the ladder by purifying um, the experiences. Uh, What they mean by that is that uh, we experience everything in our lifetimes on Earth, but we need to learn to elevate ourselves more spiritually in order to have the souls purified 
so that we can move up to a higher category of planet. There are a total of nine different categories of planets in the universe. We um, on Earth are living on category one planet. They, the Theobans, are on category nine planet, which is the highest category in the universe. Now, with some of these uh, reincarnated people, they strongly believe that happens, don't they? Yes. In fact, there are a lot of scientists and psychologists and, uh, that show that reincarnation actually exists. Uh, for example, Dr. Brian Weiss, uh, Dr. Ian Stevenson, and even some of the families um, um, that uh, have babies born that have uh, memories from the 9-11th event, uh, they, they remember what happened on that day. Uh, like how they died. So this is actually a evidence of uh, reincarnation. Uh, the reason that the Bible doesn't really talk about it is that uh, it's really removed by the uh, Catholic Church councils. Uh, the book Theoba Prophecy specifically named the four different church council meetings that intentionally removed certain things from the Bible, uh, the ancient scripture, original scriptures uh, in the Bible. Fascinating work, to be sure. Let's talk about the financial challenges facing the planet. They even address that, don't they? Well, they did. They say that uh, there's a small group of financiers that are controlling everything uh, behind the scenes. What we see, the politicians fighting against each other, Republicans, Democrats, uh, they're actually just uh, for shows. They're just puppets controlled by this small group of financiers. So we really need to look at uh, what's really going on behind everything. We need to wake up and not to be really influenced by, by the media. We need to be able to have uh, more independent thinking and to look at everything behind, scene, behind the scenes. They say to, uh, actually Michelle de Marquet told me that there are 12 families in the world that um, are really doing everything behind the, behind the scenes. Fascinating indeed. And now you say that there are dangers to planet Earth, that there are various things that they've warned us about. What were they? Um, they warned us about the, the four um, different things. The first, number one, the most dangerous, most dangerous thing on Earth is money. Money, the really? Second, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous? See, I guess in the money. wrong hands it can be, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are natural ways to cure certain diseases, but the pharmaceutical companies cannot make money out of them. They cannot patent those natural ways to cure certain diseases. Um, and, and also the um, petroleum companies, uh, uh, they want to suppress the uh, clean technologies, the real technologies, such as the water-based engines, and also, like, uh, um, if they cannot make money, if the government cannot collect uh, taxes, then they wouldn't uh, encourage people to use uh, this kind of free and clean energy. Um, so everything revolves around uh, money. Everything does, doesn't it? Yes. What else? And the second most dangerous thing on Earth would be the politicians. And uh, That may be true. Something... Yeah, huh. unfortunately... <laughs> and the third would be journalists and drugs. Really? They put those two together in that category? Yeah, I don't know why, but they did. They say journalists uh, seek for sensational news, and they kind of influence people's uh, psyche or people's mind uh, in a very, very interesting way. I mean, like they, they tend to focus on the... Uh, uh, on the news that caused a lot of uh, turmoil uh, in people's mind, like the uh, killings, the murders, and also suicides and, and the death. And they should instead focus more on the good news, the, the news that can motivate people, um, can really help people to be more compassionate, more loving people. That's fascinating to be sure. And what about the last one? The last one will be religions. They say that religions really? are actually... Be careful yeah, there, Sam. They're actually curses on Earth. Yeah. 
So they say, like, religion is really different from spirituality. We should grow and elevate our spiritual development, but religions tend to distort um, the original intentions of uh, the uh, spiritual masters that happened on earth. And, uh, for example, they try, the religious clergy, they try to be like agents um, between us and God. Um, they say that um, when God created uh, human beings, it inserted a tiny person of itself to each one of us. So we are part of God, and God is part of us. So when we try to communicate with God, we should um, actually focus on communicating within ourselves, like look inside our hearts for answers, because the kingdom of God is within you. And we should not depend or rely on religious leaders or pastors or the clergy, uh, because we can just communicate with God directly. Uh, that's more effective, more efficient uh, in doing so. How important is meditation with all of this, Sam? Meditation is actually extremely important, according to the Theobans, because that's actually one of the best ways to, to communicate with your higher self, which is part of God, the Creator, the Source, or the Great Ether. By medita meditating, uh, um, you can actually calm your mind, and so that way you can really communicate more effectively with your soul or your higher self. And, and they actually encourage people to do that uh, uh, daily. And when Michel de Marquet was on their planet, he saw the Theobans, the Jehovans, meditate most of their times. Um, he, he found it fascinating. It does work, Sam. Do you know how to levitate by any chance? Well, I know how to do that uh, theoretically, but I haven't really practiced it yet because it takes a lot of energy and efforts to do so. Um, the way to do that is actually um, to meditate and concentrate uh, in a way. And I know people personally who could do that when they were young. Um, a friend of mine who is a Chinese uh, Qigong master, and um, she, she, she actually was able to do that when she was young, when she, her energy level was high. But she cannot do it now. And, and actually, I also saw there's a film... Um, shot by a magician called Dan White, W-H-I-T-E, that when he visited uh, a monk in Nepal, he filmed how the monk levitated himself. He couldn't figure out how he did it, but um, I think uh, there are still some people on Earth who could do that just by meditation and also concentration. What about secret societies? What, is, what does the book say about them? Well, the book, uh, 334 Lives, is an autobiography of the uh, highest chair of the Illuminati. The 41st degree is actually the highest degree of the Illuminati. Um, it used to be 39th degree. And, and some people, um, they interact with the lower degree members. But I think this, if they really want to get to know the heart of the secret societies, they should only read two books. One is the three, 334 Lives, and then the other book is uh, Theoba Prophecy. You know, before I uh, translated the book, I didn't really believe in any of the secret societies. I thought those were just uh, conspiracy theories and people's mm -hmm. imagination. I really took none of it. Uh, but after, you know, I was searching for ways to see auras, I found this um, book, uh, 334 Lives, um, and they were talking about, uh, you know, forum, um, that uh, this German book that showed people how they were able to, um, to, to, to see auras and also to perform other, like, uh, supernatural abilities. So the gist of the book tells uh, the history and the story of how that one person from a rural part of Germany um, rose up to the ladder, became and the, the highest uh, degree member of the Illuminati. And it talks about all the rituals, the, um, and some of the scenes are really graphic and, and torture scenes and, that are really only for adults. 
but it shows that how they're able to use a special form of astrology to predict what's going to happen to a person or to a certain group of people. And they're able to calculate the positions of planets um, in an instant second. Uh, they, they're also able to like, perform other techniques such as the mind control and also uh, how they influence uh, uh, certain politicians and uh, how the structure of uh, the Illuminati is. Um, for example, it says that their, the headquarter in, the, in North America was actually located in New York, and the headquarter in Germany was actually um, in, a, in a small city in Germany. Uh, and and the, it, it gives a lot of specific details, but it really doesn't name any names uh, because uh, it would put the author in danger. Why the title, 334 Lies? Yes, 334. Uh, there's also a symbol of thousands of lies. So, but if people search 334 Lies on Amazon, they can find the book. But, I mean, why that title? Well, it's a mystery. I, I, you know, I, I don't really know. Being the translator myself, I, I don't really know. They, they have a, a very unique way of... Um, Predicting, predicting certain things uh, through numerology. So every number has a meaning. And I guess uh, 334,000 uh, has a specific meaning uh, that uh, waiting to be deciphered. All right, let's go to the phones. Let's start it off by going to David, truck driving in Illinois. No snow yet, David, out there? Howdy. Thank you for taking my call. How's, how's the driving? No snow yet? Uh, Nope, no snow. Looks like it's looking well, cloudy, but I looked at the forecast before I took off. It didn't call for any snow tonight, but I'm running 94 and 90 all the way out to Washington. So, yeah, I'll probably run into it. Well, be careful. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Well, uh, I want to make a couple points that I disagree, but at the same time, I agree with your guest. Okay. I didn't catch his name. Samuel. And, pardon me? Samuel. Daniel. Samuel, okay. Samuel, well, he, Sam. Samuel, okay, I'm sorry. Um, first of all, I I was putting fuel on the truck, getting the truck washed and so forth, so I missed part of it, but I heard him say they took reincarnation out of the Bible. No, they didn't. If we listen to everything that the Scriptures say, yes, it does. Now, God said the covenant was good for a thousand generations. We go to Psalm 90, we listen to how it talks about a, we live 70 to 80 years, so a little bit longer, then we die and we fly away. This is where we go up to the Holy Mountain. It's talked about it in Ezekiel 40 through 46. We go, it talks several spots about the regeneration of the Son of Man. Then it talks about Matthew 7, 12, do unto other men as you would want other men do unto you. What you reap in this life is what will be done to you in your next life. It's a lesson for our souls. Now, where he was talking about God that dwells in everybody, that's what makes all of us part of the Son of God, because you listen to Colossians 1, we know, well, well, it's talked about in Corinthians, where it talks about everybody is the temple of God. Then you go to Colossians 1, the blood of Jesus, which is in the, Jesus, the Son of uh, is invisible in the image of the invisible God, which makes everybody the son of God that can be seen, regardless of race, color, nationalism, size, or shape. Doesn't matter. We all are part of one son of God. Want to react to that, Sam? I totally agree with you, and I hope all Christians believe uh, the same way that you believe. Uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of uh, fundamentalist uh, Christians and evangelicals that uh, still deny the uh, concept of reincarnation. Um, and also the book, The Oba Prophecy, actually talks about uh, how the ancient, uh, in ancient times the ETs in, intervened uh, in, in our lives uh, as documented uh, in the ancient scriptures in the Bible. For example, the destruction of the Sodom and Gomorrah, um, leading Moses out of Egypt, out of um, uh, leading Hebrews out of Egypt by Moses and parting the sea, uh, the Sea of Reeds was actually an intervention by the ETs. 
according to the book, The Obad Prophecy. It also explains why the Bible doesn't have any records of Jesus Christ performing any miracles before the age of 30, and why there's a tomb of Jesus Christ in Shingo Village, Japan, with specific verifiable facts that are so detailed that people can look it up on the Internet or by visiting uh, Shingo Village, Japan. So I totally agree with you, and this book explains um, how the stories in the Bible came about and how the ETs, this group of ETs, the Theobans or Jehovans, intervened in our ancient past trying to help us to the right path of uh, spiritual growth. Let's go west of the Rockies. Gina Maria with us in the state of Washington. Hi, Gina Maria. Hello. Um, Love and peace and healing, and God bless to everyone and everything everywhere. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. So um, I wanted to tell you about three short experiences and how it all combines to possibly an ET technology and ask him a question. Sure. So when I was four years old, I heard a sound, and I went to my the window. I woke up, went to the window, and saw saw blackness with colors and shapes. And I heard the sound. And um, the sound is what's the important part of this, because um, somehow, you know, I knew this was a UFO experience. And so I memorized the sound at four years old, and all those years told people about the sound throughout the years. And when I was about 25 years old, I heard the sound again on TV. Um, there were these people that had seen a UFO and heard the sound it made, and they didn't have a video camera, so they audio taped the sound. Then they got a permit and these huge speakers, and on this show, they were trying to transmit the sound to outer space to get a hold of the UFO. And um, when I heard the sound, I knew it was the same sound that I'd been telling everybody about since I was four years old. The next time I heard it was in early 2020, when they had actually in November of 2019, and then, you know, in 2020, they produced the sound to us, um, for us to hear, which is uh, is a form of gravitational waves. And I believe that the gravitational waves were the UFO's propulsion system of the UFO that I heard when I was um, four years old and had that experience. And I'm wondering if he has ever heard this before. And one more thing, I levitated when I was about five years old down a flight of stairs in front of these little girls, and the little girls ran away screaming and and upset and never talked to me again. And I and from then on, it was like something in my soul said, oh, you're not supposed to do that. And I have not done it since. So what's your question, though, for Sam? My question was, has he heard about the propulsion system, and could gravitational waves have been the propulsion system for the UFO? Um, the... Um Different ETs have different technologies, uh, the propulsion systems. This group of ETs, they have um, kind of a very advanced uh, form of technology. Anti-gravity, anti don't they? Yes, anti-gravity. And also they form a magnetic field around this kind of uh, spacecraft, um, their own magnetic field, so that when they move at a very super fast speed, uh, the people inside wouldn't feel anything. Uh, People don't feel that they're moving fast or slow. And this is uh, something that uh, I find to be very interesting because it seems that their technology is more superior, superior to other ET technologies that um, I've heard from the grace. Let's go to Norm in St. Louis. Welcome to the program. Hey, Norm, go ahead. Uh, another great show tonight. Super. They're all great, yeah. Norm. They're all great. I know they are. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to I've agreed with George uh, for 20 years, but I, I got to go with the, your your uh, guest tonight on uh, the idea of uh, if you can get to a paradise, I'd go there in a heartbeat. So he he can take my phone number down if they huh. contact him. He he can give me a buzz. I'm, I'll go with him. They probably already know where you are, Norm. I'm sure they do. Uh, second point was. Uh, um, I think he was spot on with the, uh, the assessment of uh, problems of the world, you know, uh, with politics and money, whatnot. But uh, I don't, I don't think it's so much, so much money in itself as it is the 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 wide gulf between uh, gulf between uh, you know the poor and the rich. There's one percent on everything, and you know they just had that Bilderbergs and. 
WEF over there, you know, and or what it's called, Vagos or something, uh, Switzerland, I think, and you know, and they're they're all preaching this green earth uh, malarkey. And I, I understand we need to, you know, we got one earth, one one sky, one water, but you know, the thing is, they show up in uh, Lear jets. They drive around in a uh, five mile an hour, five miles per gallon, you know, uh, Lincoln Navigators and uh, Lincoln Town Cars and whatnot, drive around picking up $2,000 women for the night. I mean, I'm not taking morality lessons from people that are not moral people. So if I'm going to get morals, it's going to be out of the Bible, out of Jesus, not from these people. Well, you're probably right about that. Go ahead, uh, Sam. Yeah, I, I definitely agree, and I think uh, it's important to really focus on what uh, Jesus taught us in the New Testament, especially the four Gospels. And I think uh, that's actually the way to live, uh, to grow more spiritually, and actually I try to follow it um, to the letter, because uh, love your enemies is really difficult to do. Uh, we all can get along with people who like us, but to love someone who doesn't like us, who is uh, your enemy, is really difficult to do. But that's what's going to be more rewarding when someone passes on uh, to, uh, to, the, to, the next, to the next lifetime. So I think uh, it's very important to follow the teachings of Jesus. Let's go back to the uh, Great Pyramid of Giza, where you believe it is an energy center. Tell me more about that. Well, it uh, really is an energy center that can capture the cosmic energy so that the user, like the pharaohs in ancient Egypt, they used it by meditating inside of the, uh, the king's chamber and then to communicate to people on other planets because they can actually focus their energy um, and, and to, to the extent that they can really uh, instantaneously get the messages um, communicated to the people on the planets. So they have this it kind of concentrated energy in a sense that uh, it does miracles. And we, like, but according to this book, because of the uh, shift of the um, magnetic poles of Earth, um, the current Great Pyramid of Egypt is not aligned well enough for us to use it again as the two uh, to communicate with uh, other people on other planets. But um, whenever there's a civilization that um, has elevated, uh, elevated uh, spiritually to a certain level, they always build a great pyramid like the Egyptians did. There was another great pyramid on the continent of uh, Lemuria before the continent sank about 14,500 years ago. Uh, that Great Pyramid was actually three times as large as the Great Pyramid of Egypt. And, uh, and I think uh, if we are spiritually grown enough, we can also do the same thing by, by imitating the Pyramid in Egypt. Um, the Pyramid in Egypt was actually built by the person named Thoth about uh, 17,000 years ago, over a nine-year period of time using anti-gravitational technology and also supersonic, gra supersonic uh, vibrational system to cut the huge stones in a very precise manner. And I think if we handle those technologies nowadays, we can do the same thing. It's doable. It's just that how we need to work on that. Fascinating indeed. Samuel, uh, give us your websites, if you would. It's uh, chinasona.org slash Theoba, this is the capital letter T, and people can search on Google my name, Samuel Chong, and Theoba to find more information about uh, me and the book. And we've got the link for you on the websites, of course. And, but these books that you've been talking about tonight, are they still available to people? Yes, they're still available to people. And actually, reading these two books are the best investment I have ever made in my entire life. I studied economics and I studied the uh, financial investments of uh, Warren Buffett and Jim Rogers. But I think those two books are the best investment I've ever made so far. How were you able to get the books translated, Sam? 
Well, uh, I'm a Chinese uh, translator, so I translated uh, uh, Michelle de Marquet's book from English into Chinese uh, with the help of uh, others. And for the book, uh, uh, 334 from German to English, uh, that's actually a secret how I did it. <laughs> How'd you pull that off? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's really interesting because I was going to read it and um, I thought it would be necessary to translate it into English, not only for me to read it, but also for others who want to know the secrets of the Illuminati to read about it. Walter so in Pennsylvania have... gets us started. Go ahead, Walt. Hi, George. Uh, George's conversation is very similar to the one we had about a week ago. Uh, George, I've always wondered whether biologically it's possible to uh, travel at or above the speed of light because, as we all know, Einstein said that clocks stop at the speed of light or time is suspended. Now, that also includes our biological clocks. So uh, at the speed of light with our EEG and our EKG flatline, and isn't that exactly what is happening or what uh, was done to Ted Williams. Ted Williams, you might say, is traveling through time and space without aging. He's in a state of cryogenic suspension where traveling at the speed of light, uh, as Einstein implied, would put us in a state of space-time suspension. Well, so, you know, he's George, dead first before they cryogenically froze well, him. He died. Well, exactly, well, exactly right, George. Well, you have to ask yourself, is it possible to live without aging, George? That's the question. That is a would good question. Would traveling at the speed of light automatically kill you? I don't think it would kill you, but it would slow down your aging process, to be sure. Samuel, with the propulsion system of the ETs, have they learned how to bend space and time? Yes, they definitely have through teleportation, but they can only do that in deep space. Otherwise, the spacecraft would uh, have exploded. So they can only do that in deep space for some reason. Um, and also regarding the time uh, issue, they create their own magnetic field around their vessel so that uh, they kind of isolate the vessel from the uh, the, uh, the uh, theory of uh, relativity. And... Um, also, one other information is that the Theobans, the Jehovans, um, they can live forever because uh, they can regenerate uh, their bodies at will. So they always look like uh, in their 30s, very beautiful and very like, useful-looking people. And they never age because they're highly advanced people. And on Category 9 planet, they can just live forever. Let's go to Jody in New York. Welcome to the program. Hi, Jody. Um, hi, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, Samuel, thank you for your work. It's very interesting. Um, I just wanted to ask you, also, I had a question about aging. I get a sense that we're not supposed to age and that it's aging is just wrong. It's like an abomination or false mindset or an implant or something. So my first question is, I was wondering if the field has said anything about us aging, separate from the other person's question about aging, you know, through the time barrier, but just in general, living here on Earth and aging. And then the second question is, you mentioned the 12 families that are running the planet behind the scenes and how money and greed and they're killing everything because they're so greedy and all of that. How do we heal from that? How do we get out from under their thumb? Has the field been mentioned anything about that? And the last question is, did they mention that there's anywhere on the planet specifically that has the highest vibration, that if somebody went there, it would be the most healing? Those are my questions, and I thank you very much. Okay. Uh, regarding aging, um, <clears throat> well, it really depends on the category level of the planets. On Earth, we are a category one planet, so on average, we live up to about 100 years on average. Uh, on category nice planet. They live forever, so they don't age at all. Um, interestingly enough, there's a very interesting specific fact in this book about Jewish people, the Hebrews. They originally came from Category 3 planet. So you remember in the Bible, they recorded that the, uh, the Hebrews, they lived up to 900 years or over, 
in the very beginning, but then gradually they kind of um, um, reduce their longevity uh, by by the hundreds up until like us. So I guess it's just my conjecture. My my guess is that it has something to do with the uh, category of planets. The higher the category, the longer that we can live. Um, and and for us, we have to learn how to uh, live and die um, for about a hundred years or so. Um, the second question regarding the uh, 12 families, and I think the book, The Oba Prophecy, and the book, um, 334 Lives, both books give a solution, which is the power of the people. Um, through collective and concerted actions, we can use nonviolent resistance to rise up against tyranny, just like Gandhi did in India and also what uh, Martin Luther King promoted. Um, because if you think about it, we, the poor people, will lose very little if we form a, have a strike or something like that. And the wealthy, the super wealthy, the 12 families, they will lose the biggest, the most, because they benefit from slave, enslaving us. If we act together in a nonviolent fashion, resisting their control, then it's going to work uh, very well. And your third question regarding the location um, on Earth, it really doesn't mention about the vibrations um, levels of different locations on Earth. However, it really just uh, tells us that uh, life is a, is a learning experience, and we should uh, fully utilize and take advantage of the challenges that we face in life to respond appropriately to the challenges in order to elevate our vibrations. So uh, we don't need to really focus too much on where to live as long as we focus on how we respond to the challenges that we face in life. Let's go to final calls here. Thank you, Jody. Appreciate you being part of the program. John in Mississippi, first-time caller for us. Hi, John. How you doing, sir? Look, I got Please. something that bothers me every day, and I read the Bible, and I kind of figured something out, I believe. What's that? I believe... I believe that the Rock of Gibraltar, as legend has it, where Samson spread the earth apart, at, and they got all these titanium plates down there. Well, they say wherever there's titanium plates, there's volcanoes in the Mediterranean Sea. Well, if that's the volcano, that's called Hades. And I believe there's an alchemy cult, an alchemy cult. You know, Lucifer and, and Satan. Anyway, the, it, the alchemy cult, like the game Jenga, the game Jenga, where you pull out that piece of wood and everything falls. I believe they're going to destroy 25% of the planet, just like the Bible says. They're making war against the two prophets. I guess that's Muhammad and Jesus. But Jesus is God, you know. But I believe that the Bible says, that, or the Quran says, the two prophets. Yeah, I partially agree with what you said. Because the purpose of the author, um, 334 Lives, of writing the book was actually to warn people about the organization, the Illuminati. When he was the chair, the highest chair of the organization, he was uh, leaning towards more like a, a female biosis relationship between uh, the Illuminati and the non um, members of the uh, secret society like a more harmonious relationship for all people on Earth. But he was, um, like the reason he disclosed everything was that he found out there was another person, like a younger person, more powerful than him in psychic abilities, in supernatural abilities, that was trying to take over him. And, and his idea is more evil, more like uh, splitting the world, causing wars, causing conflicts. So he was trying to warn us that we should be careful, and the power of the people is what they're really afraid of. So even though they have supernatural powers and abilities, they're afraid of the um, collective consciousness of the people, the mass. Next up, we've got Ben in Wisconsin. Hello, Ben. Take it away. Thank you, George. Thank you. George, you, you used to talk with someone who there was a, a, a buried pyramid, in, in a sense, west of Denali Mountain, which used to be Mount McKinley. And he's talking about Samuel, that, that, that the Giza Pyramid is perhaps not in the right 
position now because of the transition of the the earth. Uh, can we count on all this? You know, because there's so many things, the connectivity of of, of these positions now, and has it really changed? And is what's happening with our change? What is happening, Sam? Well, it's just a natural change because of the shift of the poles. Um, so the Great Pyramid of Egypt is no longer aligned correctly to be utilized as it was used in the past. But I think uh, with our collective efforts, uh, we can we can also like uh, use um, kind of um, technologies that we had in the past to build another one. And I think uh, when the time is right, we are going to receive help from 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 the ETs. You think they'll help us or not? You really do, I huh? Think, yeah, I think they're helping us, guiding us throughout history, like using this book, for example, and also the stories in the Bible, and just indirectly because uh, they never served a meal on the plate. Next up, let's go to Leonardo in Minnesota. Welcome to the show. Hi, Leonardo. Hello, um, George. Um, and forgive me because I think of Art Bell all the time. Um, um, and hello, Mr. Samuel. I just wanted to share my story with you, Mr. Samuel. I think that a lot of the things that you said tonight, they really touched home because um, I do believe that there's life outside of our planet. I've had my own experiences that I won't go into with some of, some of that stuff, but I will just share what I shared with the person who was trying to figure out why I was calling. You really touched home when you talked about the God within all of us. By accident um, in my life, I've always said that to people, and people in my community where I live at, they've always thought I was crazy, and I said that God always has placed a piece of itself in all of us. And I said, we are all God. And people thought I was crazy by saying that stuff. And I've always lived my life by, by that. Um, you know, I had a stroke um, by accident. Um, I, I, I was trying to, I was trying to get, I was lost my job. And then I went through two interviews and they kept hiring me for collections. And then they, put me in their claims department and I, it, things wouldn't work out. Then they would move me to their, their, their collections department. And then finally they said, you're not catching on. And they let me go. And so the, the second job that that happened on, I was in my bed and I'm laying in my bed and a, a light came up in front of my, the, the, at the bottom of my bed. And I kept trying to figure out, I said, am I dreaming or am I awake? And, then I realized it was an angel. She spread her rings, and it was like she was going to snatch me out of my body. And that whole day, I still kept trying to figure out, was I dreaming or was I awake? And I went to work, and I got let go of. And I know. Um, and then I realized I, they took me to the hospital, and I had a stroke. And I know that these things do not happen by accident. So I, I totally believe in it. everything that you were sharing um, today really for me, touch home because God is within all of us. And I'm not a religious person. My mother's Christian. My father had passed away was um, Islam. It's kind of funny how they, how they, they met each other, but you, whatever, everything that you said, Mr. Samuel, uh, really touched home. And it was, it, it's really, it touches my heart. And George, I listen to you every night and man, you really, you do not know, the service that you do for everybody. Thanks, so, both of you, take care. Great statement. You take care of yourself, too. We're wrapping things up here, Samuel. I want to thank you for being on the program. Again, where can people get these books? And they can get it uh, on Amazon by searching Theoba Prophecy. And thank you very much, uh, everyone. This is the best investment you will ever make in your entire lifetime. Trust me. Thank you, Sam. You keep in touch with us. Samuel Chong, the book he's talking about that he had interpreted is Theuba Prophecy. The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.